Hi, I'm Ryan Carniato, creator of the JavaScript framework SolidJS. I'm excited to talk to you all about today's topic. I spoke at BConf last year, and I was very excited to talk there as well. I used the conference to introduce the world new concepts like islands routing and server functions, things that have started showing up in other frameworks the past year. We also introduced Solid Start, Solid's meta framework, and did its beta launch. But if it isn't obvious from the title, today is going to be a very different sort of talk. If anything, it's a sequel. And maybe not the sequel that everyone's looking for. The overarching theme of last year's talk was V gave us the tools for anyone to create meta frameworks the way they wanted to. And for someone who never wanted to create a meta framework, yes, I'm talking about myself, it was, and still is, an absolute game changer. But a lot has changed in the past year, and I feel like we've learned a lot collectively. It wasn't only the early framework authors like ourselves, Astro, Nux, Feltkit, Marco Run, Analog, Rackus, that felt this, but the wider community of developers definitely saw Beat as that platform. So when the question came up to retire CRA in that highly controversial GitHub issue from Theo Brown, Beat was kind of the obvious choice. Well, at least on the surface, the React core team had different ideas. The official position is that React was now expected to be used with a meta framework. This was conveyed publicly by the core team members in several channels from comments um, like Next13 is the real React 18 release to the docs recommending these frameworks as the way to start your new React projects. This is a pretty serious precedent and has big implications when you consider React's place in the ecosystem. On the solid start side of things, we've had our own learnings. I'm a natural unbundler. I like breaking apart problems to the fundamentals. I pitched last year that if we broke things down to composable primitives, you don't really need a meta framework in a classic sense. And we've found success in this. I remember the first time I saw a Tanstack query in solid start. It felt first party. I've never felt that way in any meta framework before or since. You dropped your crate query calls in and everything just worked. Suspense, server rendering, streaming, data serialization. The developer could just choose their data fetching library of choice, no loaders, no get server side props, and it just worked efficiently as if it was first party with a single system server and client. Even doing database calls directly in the query function just worked because we had those server functions. Honestly, there's nothing quite like it when a user comes up to you and is like, I don't like the caching options for the default data loading in Solid Start. And you ask, well, is there a library that you do prefer? And then you can just respond, well, use it. We also had our success with our Islands router prototype. When the Google team encouraged frameworks to work on the Taste Movies demo, we built our own version, or I should say the community built it. This was an amazing effort of eight contributors to make one of our best demos to date. Honestly, I still just love showing off this demo. This app is just, it looks a lot like any kind of client side app. It's got transitions when you move, you can click into stuff. And basically, you know, you can go in here, you can maybe search something and you know, without losing the focus or, you know, any kind of glitch, you essentially have a full experience. But the interesting part about this demo is it uses islands. In fact, this demo is only 13 kilobytes of JavaScript. When you put that up against similar solutions, um, as you can see, there's, there's lots of them available, some with client routing and some without, Solid's demo was much smaller than many of the popular options with things like Next.js and even Next.js with server components weighing in at 190 kilobytes, almost 20 times larger. This demo actually led us to getting significant funding from the Chrome team to continue our research into the partial hydrated solution. So that's pretty good. But it's been a year and I'm sure the question a lot of people's minds is, one is 1.0 of Solid Start. And I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that's not what I'm announcing today. But it is very related to the topic of this talk. We've seen Solid Start being used in production applications that serve millions of users in things like Post.News, 
but I'm not satisfied where things have been at. Last year, I outlined what I wanted to avoid, and we succeeded at most of these. There are some APIs that I feel we introduced to make things easier, but ultimately didn't simplify things. There were some edge cases that weren't handled as cleanly as we would have liked, but for the most part, the design was good, and we made the most of existing APIs and concepts without being too opinionated. Where we started falling down was that last point. I'm not used to having repos with hundreds of open issues, especially where the vast majority of them are legit bugs. I know it means people are using it, but none of Solid's other repos, including Solid itself, has ever had more than a handful of legit bugs open at a given time. We're an open source group. Yes, we have some corporate funding, but I've learned to be realistic over the years, and this was a red flag. We weren't architected to succeed at our goals. So, you know, it comes down to the Unix philosophy. We were still trying to do too much. Our successes were where we empowered others to build the experiences they wanted, not by forcing people down a path kicking and screaming. We had a good idea, but we needed to do it better. So today I'm going to share our adventures and our learnings into the space as we've been working on Solid Start. I suppose this starts with a question. What is a meta framework? And truthfully, this discussion can be as pedantic as library versus framework, but I'm going to look at it a little bit more mechanically. To me, there are four parts that each roughly layer on top of each other that make up a meta framework. We have the router that's responsible for navigation and data, the framework for rendering or library, if you prefer, the bundler for packaging and the server runtime to ensure it runs on every platform. These roughly go from most opinionated to least opinionated. So a big part of addressing solid start was deciding where to draw that line. I'm going to go through each of these one by one, um, starting with the routing. Routing is by far the most important decision to define the architecture of a given application. The web is just a big router, and every significant change in the evolution of web development starts there. Whether it was dynamic routes on old PHP that got us away from static serve pages, um, client-side routing signifying the arrival of single-page apps. The history API and push state, which allow for seamless server render and universal apps. And um, even now, things like SolidJS's Island Router, Next's App Router, or Astro's View Transition integration, which allow client-navigated, partially hydrated solutions. But as I said, it's also the most opinionated. My friend Tanner might have the most amazing React Router I've ever seen. But if every meta framework has their own, well, he's sort of out of luck. Some have tried to make agnostic routers that work between frameworks, but that assumes too much. Data fetching patterns and change management can be very different as well. As we can see in React, it is hard enough when your ecosystem is so large to have a single routing solution. So while the goal of universalizing these concepts is admirable, it is too high in the stack. The frameworks themselves are all different and have different needs out of routing. I do want to clarify, I'm not talking about the file routing conventions, as those ultimately are just compiled to some configuration. I consider that part of the bundling build step layer. We are working towards Solid Start being able to use any Solid Router. Today, the routes are pluggable into Solid's router, but they should be pluggable into any Solid Router. Okay, the next layer, the framework, or the library, if you prefer. This part is a given. We need a tool that knows how to render and how to update across a variety of environments. There are a ton of choices here. A ton of great choices that I think this is actually the least controversial piece. It's simple. Obviously, choose a framework with signals. But more seriously, as we go down the stack, the less opinionated things get, which means from my perspective, everything below this layer should be framework agnostic for the most part. Which leads us to that next level, bundling. Well, obviously we have a pretty good tool here with Vite, but I want to talk a bit more specifically here. I've waxed poetic before about just how powerful the universal plugin system is, but it's more than having the platform that supports this sort of composable plugin system. This last year has largely been about understanding the primitives we need for bundling modern JS apps. 
code extraction is something a year ago that we discovered but didn't even realize was a common piece we were all looking for. Solid had its server functions, Quick had its closure preserving dollar sign modules, and React was just about to announce Use Client with its next 13 release. All different applications of basically the same capability. Quick also added server functions almost immediately after the conference last year. And when Next added its server function API with Use Server, it used similar closure preservation techniques to Quick. We kept seeing this trend, so we thought to generalize it and bring that capability to everyone on top of Vite. So enter Bling. A name I gave the project due to all the dollar signs that just kind of stuck. Tanner, Nikhil, and myself took our first stab at this, and as a means for experimentation, it is really powerful. There were server functions, but also things like secret dollar sign for hiding client secrets, lazy dollar sign to inline lazy loaded modules. You could use it to take something like Tanner's React router or Solid's router and define full code splittable route definitions with data fetching all in the same file with none of the clunkiness that led to needing a file system routing system in the first place. We even looked at stuff like worker dollar sign and WebSocket dollar sign. People from the community built libraries like PRPC, which brought PRPC-esque setup with validation to the server function world. As I said, we took a compiler approach, which made it really easy to build features as all analysis was local, but it did pose some complications. Code only got registered at runtime if it got imported and each wrapper was its own entry point. And this meant our server functions that lived in lazily loaded components and never got navigated to on the server never got registered, even if they were navigated to with client routing. Oops. And our client components would be a separate bundle per component rather than allowing multiple nested islands to be bundled together. Again, this seemed like a common problem. Whether you were working on solid islands or React server components, this need of bundling as part of the code extraction pattern seemed necessary. And so Nikhil went and built Vinci, which I believe he will be talking a bit more about today. Vinci marries file system routing conventions with a server side router and bundler to serve as a foundation that MetaFrameworks could be built on. The pieces that we had slaved over for handling routes, manifests, and assets could be just wired together through centralized configuration. Well, it's Vite. Well, built on Vite. But with the server and client build steps talking to each other, we built this stuff enough times. Um, with Start, working with trying Start in Astro, and then when Nikhil was working with the Rackus team to bring React server components to Vite. We built islands, server components, server functions, client-only render modes. It was time to generalize it. All that was left was to find the right server runtime. We have built our own set of adapters over time that support a universal runtime that works on Netlify and Vercel functions in Edge. Cloudflare, Dino Deploy, AWS Lambda, we had added support for some platform-specific features like durable objects, Miniflare Local Dev, and ISR. But this has proven to be a continuous effort to keep on top of. It isn't unlike the browser wars decades ago. There's efforts like Winter CG and standardization, and we've been seeing Node add a lot of the missing web APIs the last uh, few releases, but it is too much for a framework to keep up with, in my opinion. So we looked at options to offload this part, and there are a lot of great solutions built on Vite. Not to mention every other Vite framework builds their own adapters, so we explored other frameworks that did particularly well in those areas, frameworks like Astro. Ultimately where we've landed though is Nitro. For us, Nitro seemed like the logical choice. It is low level enough to not be concerned with the layers I mentioned already, and powerful enough to be the server runtime behind Nuxt and Analog, Angular's framework. It is a project clearly made for this use case. We were able to bypass any of its opinionated bits and have it work exactly the way we want. As a bonus, Nitro is part of the UnJS um, open source project, which offers a suite of platform agnostic tools, including H3, um, which is a universal HTTP server, and UnStorage, which universalizes things like KV stores. This is a great set of open source tools available for anyone. All right, so what? Well, the end result of adopting these tools is quite significant impact on the project. 
in combination with combining some of the effort like the CLI tool um, back with the community and backporting some of the data fetching APIs into the router, the difference on maintenance is actually quite stark. Before, approximately 10,700 lines of code across 150 files made up the Solid Start project. Afterwards, we're looking at about 1,200 lines of code across 30 files. That's roughly one-ninth the lines of code and one-fifth the files to manage. <laughs> so again, are we there yet? To answer the question best, I can say today we are much closer. This is one of those roundabout journeys where we built and learned a lot in the process. With a more solid foundation, beyond improving on ability to maintain the project, we have addressed many of the core issues with the current beta and are starting a second beta phase. One to iron out the remaining issues as we make strides towards 1.0. But this new version better delivers on the goals we set out for the project a couple years ago. I encourage you to join the discussion on GitHub to help us flesh out all the details and try all the new features as we continue to stride for 1.0. If you like what you heard today, you can find all the resources you need off solidjs.com. You can find me on Twitter or X at Ryan Carniato. And if you really like nerding out on JS Frameworks, I stream weekly on YouTube and Twitch. Thank you.